Um, okay, so yeah, this is a genuine first reaction to this album. Uh, I, I have not heard it. Very few songs of, on here that I have heard. Uh, and for the very, you know, majority of them, I don't even remember what they sound like because I heard them so long ago. So we're talking maybe four or five songs I've heard out of this album. And I very, very vaguely remember them. So uh, this is a genuine first reaction. I'm super excited. I'm very happy to finally be getting around to this album for you guys. And uh, you know what? Let's just jump in, man. Let's just jump into it. Track one is Nike's. Hmm. All you want is Nike. Wow. Trayvon, a nigga look just like Damn. This is a trip, man. Discussion. The layers, dude. We'll let you guys prophesy. Oh, I love that transition. I love his flow. Oh, bringing the drums back in, man. So sick. Yeah, that's a vibe and a half. You know, that's a great, great vibe to start this album off. I like how uh, he does that thing where he pitches his vocals up, right? A few octaves. Uh, I, I, you know, I like it. Uh, I think it does go on for a little bit too long. You know, some people might might say that it's a little gimmicky to sing the majority of a song with your your voice pitched up um but I, I you know i'm not really mad at it uh i do like it i do prefer it when he he drops his voice down to its regular octave because he sings so well manipulates that auto tune beautifully creates such interesting soundscapes man the the little shimmering uh, i forget the name of it man the the chimes that they panned to one of my ears is really cool. The subtle strings on my right ear and the subtle guitar being plucked in my left ear while he just sings and, and kind of vocalizes is just really, really wonderful to listen to. In the beginning, when they have the really, uh, you know, low-key drums just kind of like keeping that, that pulse of the song going while he sings in that, that higher-pitched, you know, uh, pitched-up vocals... I, I like those drums. I think they're very, very cool. They're very simple. They uh, they don't overdo it. They don't distract us from everything else that's going on in the track. Very, very nice track to kind of vibe out to. It does make me want to turn the lights off and just close my eyes and, and drift. It's kind of one of those tracks. I loved it. Loved it. I didn't even think it was too long, and that's over five minutes, which is uh, pretty rare for me. So, track two, Ivy. That one, that one bar is familiar to me. Okay, so as I listen to this song, it's starting to come back to me. I have heard this one before. Uh, vaguely familiar, but I, I, you know, I remember really liking it because of the uh, summertime kind of California-ish, you know, beach vibes with the, uh, the guitars that I'm getting. That really warbly guitar sound. Sweet falsetto, man. Wow. That's so dreamy, dude. I love the... I love it. That chord progression is killer, man. This man's singing his heart out, man. Taking it up an octave, dude. Let's go. Oh, the processing on his vocals, man. Goosebumps. Goosebumps everywhere. That's a very Kanye thing to do. <laughs> that is very Kanye, man. What's going on, dude? Just breaking $1,000 studio equipment. Um, <laughs> That's an awesome song, man. That's a beautiful song. I, uh, I like the weirdness at the end. I think it's cool. Uh, the really warbly, dreamy guitars, man. That it's hypnotizing. It's so easy to get lost in. Um, vocal performance is insane. Uh, the way he's able to go into his falsetto and then back down into his chest voice, and then he's able to hit those same notes but belting them in his chest voice. Uh, the way he transitions seamlessly into that lower octave uh, bridge, back into the chorus, an octave up uh you know compared to where he usually sings it and then even goes higher when he uh when he you know performs that sec that second or third chorus does a little bit of a rearrangement you know uh i, I don't know the lyrics but uh what is it it's all right to hate me now and then uh, it's all right to hate me now something like that that he does so he, he he does that little bit of a rearranging there that's really really cool um man 
That's a brilliant song, dude. That's a brilliant song. Were there drums on that track? I don't think there were. I didn't... I'm thinking back on it now, not even having noticed that there were no drums, because it really feels like I didn't even need them. Man, that's a great song. That is a great, great song. Killer melodies, awesome performances. I remember why I, I liked that song so much the first time I heard it. Going back and, and rediscovering that is, you know, that's such a pleasure. Track three is Pink and White. We get these little bursts of, of orchestral instruments. Every now and then we'll have like a, a violin, you know, arrangement or, you know, some, some extra, not just violins, but cellos and things like that. But in very short bursts, it's just like these little cinematic touches to the track, just seasoning. It's really cool the way he adds that. Oh, I didn't even mention the processing on his vocals during that last song. At some points, his vocals sound super dry, intimate, up and up front and center and close. And then towards the end of the phrases, they'll add some echo and, and just reverb and, and blow it out, like make it super big. And it, I thought that was really creative, clever, interesting to listen to. Super beautiful, man. Really, really nice. I, I have to mention that. Shout out to the engineers, dude. Jeez. If the sky is pink and white, if the ground is black and yellow. Multiple takes gives it a really cool chorus effect. Oh, the bassist is murdering that line, dude. Love the pianos. Very simple, but pretty. I like the pads, too. Little bongos? How great does that acoustic guitar sound? Strings. Just building. Oh, bringing it back. Heavenly background vocals. Is that Beyonce? I'm pretty sure that is Beyonce. That voice is super familiar. Okay, man. Wow. Three for three. Coming back to it and kind of rediscovering it, just like I did with Ivy. I remember, I'm pretty sure I remember someone saying that's Beyonce in the background, man. But I, uh, I don't, I don't know for certain that that's her. But man, this one's got a really cool swing to it. You know, the little bongos coming in, the strings that build up in the middle of the track, just to kind of add a little bit of attention to it. Uh, he keeps his performance very mellow and very relaxed throughout this entire track, which I, I think is great because of the really pretty, over the top. Uh, pianos that are playing those really cool little melodies. The bass line is killer. Killer, man. Doom, 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 doom. It's just got that little, like, choppy, kind of bouncy feeling to it. It's kind of gonna make you sway a little bit. It's got a really nice little rhythm to it. Bringing in the acoustic guitars along with the bongos. Just a really, really cool moment in that song. Yeah, he did a, he did a great job. That's not one of the more vocally impressive tracks, but it, the, the fact that he is aware of all the instruments and aware of all the production and uh he's careful about leaving space in the track for those instruments to kind of shine you know he, he doesn't always have to be, be front and center in his own songs uh i love that about him i love that he's so aware of that you know he's super cool with just giving us a very relaxed performance and leaving a bunch of space for the instruments to shine on these songs love that very very cool be yourself, track four. Stop trying to be somebody else. Good enough. That's great. Don't try, rely, and trust upon your own decision. Hell yeah, dude. On your, when people become weed heads, they become weed heads? sluggish and unconcerned. I don't know about all of that, but... Sluggish, stupid, and unconcerned. Oh, we're, we're repeating it. Okay. Well, don't get in the car with someone who's inebriated. What if you're driving them home, you know? If they're driving, then yeah, yeah, you, you take the keys out of their hands. I totally agree with that. Um, that's really cool. You know, I, I, she sounds like to, like she's an older woman who seems uh, concerned about her kid. So, you know, that's sweet. It, it's kind of like a motherly, you know, it's, it's, I don't agree with everything she says, but you can tell that it's coming from a place of wanting to protect. And so, uh, you know, that's really sweet in a way. Uh, I like the little pianos that were going on in the background, the little pads that were playing underneath her uh, her advice. But um, yeah, be your, the beginning, you know, be yourself and be confident with yourself and don't try to be anyone else. That's great advice. Um, yeah, I love that, that part. But uh, the part where she said people become weed heads and they become sluggish and stupid and lazy, um, unless a doctor prescribes it, 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 you know, the doctor's prescription makes all the difference. Then you're going to use the same drug. It's not going to have any of the negative effects. 
<laughs> I don't know, you know, it just doesn't make much sense, but be yourself is, is great advice. So track five is solo. Hand me a towel, I'm dirty dancing by myself. Watch my jagger. Oh might lose my jack. I love how carefree he is with his rhythm sometimes. Uh his verses sometimes feel like they lack a, a structure, you know? He it's just so free. It's it's so the words will fall where they will. The phrases don't always have to fit within one bar. Like it's he always finds such a creative way to get his thoughts across and and not have them always conform to a rigid structure. Right? The words have to have this rhythm. They have to fall exactly on this you know this bar. The rhymes have to be placed right here. He he doesn't subscribe to those rules all the time. It's like SZA. SZA has a bunch of tracks that that uh, are the same way. They don't necessarily have that solid structure and, and the melodies aren't always um, conventional and predictable and, and they don't... Sometimes she won't even repeat a melody. She'll just sing all over the place and, and it's beautiful and it's carefree and, and interesting. And that, that's kind of what I got from that first phrase, you know? Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a conventional kind of feeling to it, the rhythm that he's singing in. I love it, man. Wow. Think we were better off so low. Grams in the sunrise. What? Smoking good rolling. Solo. Oh, that chord is interesting. That voicing. There's a bull in a matador dueling in the sky. Take a shot every time I get goosebumps, dude. Oh my god. Love. Love that. Sheesh. Won't let you fly so low. It's telling the whole story, man. I love this segment. This segment is... Mm. Ah. <laughs> Shit, dude. That is good. Love these kind of, like, gospel-sounding keys. Brilliant, man. I could tell you, I got goosebumps at least three times during that song. The, just the... the the writing is so so good uh telling the whole story and, and everything but his performance man god it's it's just phenomenal it's just phenomenal he's such an artist um that little breakdown section right uh i don't again can't really recall the lyrics i have the melody in my head but it's that the uh, it's such a killer melody, dude. And then he just belts, he starts belting the, uh, ah, that's so good. Shit, man. He's so incredible. I want to, let me, hold on. The city's on fire in hell, in hell, there's heaven. Mm. Put this on a loop. Hey. Ooh. Oh, I love that little run. Man, I could I could listen to that on a loop all day. That's that's just good music, man. Um I like solo. <laughs> Needless to say. Track six is a skyline two. I love how he, he pans the guitar a lot to just one ear. Mm. Yeah, run across beams. So mm. it's the same as far as it used to be. Wow. Hey. Uh, wanna get soaked? Oh, I love that. That's such an interesting sound. Yeah, that's a really cool little vibe, man. Uh, I don't think it's as memorable as some of the, these other songs have been off my first listen. It didn't, you know, it wasn't as, as a gripping as solo as ivy pink and white it just it doesn't feel like it's going to be one of those tracks that i come back to like those ones will but um I'm, it's not bad it, it's just uh it kind of feels like something you could put on in the background it doesn't feel like something you you actively go and and, and seek out um it's just kind of cool you know background music a little bit just just some vibes i don't think i'd skip it during a playthrough you know, I, I would definitely let it play out. It's not one of the longer tracks. It's only three minutes long. But um, yeah, I guess that that's really the only criticism I have of it is just that I don't find it very memorable. Um, yeah, it's not bad, though. Track seven, self-control. 
Mm. All the use of guitars. Wow. Hold on, I'm gonna replay that. Wow, I love the way he came in there. I think I have heard this one before. This is vaguely familiar. I think I heard this on a stream. I think you guys uh, asked me to listen to this one during one of the live streams. Uh, and it got us taken down. <laughs> it got the stream taken down. I do remember this. Um, I remember it, liking it a lot. Uh, I love all of the use of guitar on this album so far, man. All the guitars in this album have been mixed so well. They've been panned in interesting ways. They've been utilized in very, very creative manners. Um, it, it, the chord progressions that they've, you know, played on the guitars, all of the performances, the, whether it's being f the guitar is, you know, being played uh, finger style or strummed, it it's all sounds very, very good. I love the use of, of guitars, you know, electric, acoustic, all throughout this project. It's definitely stood out to me um as one of my my favorite you know things about it besides frank ocean himself of course shit that guitar is singing dude now and then you miss it keep up playing The different layers. I don't want to pull it up. Let me know who that feature is. I don't want to pull it up on, on Google. Take another shot, guys. Oh my. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. Good God. This is one of the best things I've ever heard. Oh, the little gospel chops. I'll tell you what, man. I think I had goosebumps there for like 45 seconds straight. Just, just couldn't get rid of them. Um absolutely beautiful towards the end towards the end when they open up with added layers of guitars and strings and he comes in with the really heavenly vocals and you know multiple layers of vocals that is like the moment in this song in my opinion what a brilliant seven track run dude self-control is one of my favorite songs i've heard so far on this album track eight is good guy it's only a minute long is this a skit Oh, also, let me know who the feature was on self-control, because I, I didn't want to, you know, pull it up on Google and distract myself from the song. So, yeah, let me know in the comments section. Hearing him do those runs sped up, that's just a really cool little vibe. Yeah, I'm going to treat that one like a skit, but I'm not mad at that. That's a dope little vibe. Uh, I kind of get, you know, Fun Girl by, uh, Summer Walker kind of vibes from that one. Just, just, uh, him singing and the, the guitar and it's super simple. You can hear background noise and he's just kind of vibing. Uh, I like it. I like it. Really cool. Short, sweet. Not mad at that. Nights. Let's go. This is going to have the beat switch, man. I really wish that wasn't spoiled for me, but, you know, people post it so much on the internet every time there's a New Year's Eve and they, they time it just right, you know, midnight and the beat switch, so. Hey. Yeah, there's some swagger to this one. I love the call and response between the different guitars. Love the flow. I can't stop smiling. This is, this is great. Oh. This is wavy. Oh my god, that's on Heavy Rotation Playlist. This is the Goosebump portion of the song. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's good, dude. That's fantastic. The bass pad? Is anybody else floating right now, bro? Oh, bringing it back. I mean, at this point, you know, it, it's it's like everyone else. Frank Ocean is, you know, just you can't even see where he's at. He's just he's lost up there in the clouds somewhere. And it's like it's how do you think of that transition, you know? And then with a completely different vibe, completely different, you know, beat, different tempo, maybe, you know completely different vibe and 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 he manages to still make a callback to the previous part of the song to close us out like it's there are no words you know there are just no words
this is much more of a reaction than a review because <laughs> I, I mean somebody who reviews music actually critiques it I, i'm just pointing out everything i like about it and and uh there really isn't much to dislike about this i'm gonna be real with you guys this is uh we're on track 10 and if you've uh, followed my channel for you know some time you uh you probably know that i haven't really reacted this positively to like the first 10 tracks of anything i tend to like shorter songs and shorter albums and this this album has 17 songs and it's an hour long and uh i don't know i mean he's he's nine for nine track 10 is solo reprise this is the andre uh, 3000 skit or uh interlude i know this one solo that i can see under the skirt of an ant solo that i don't get high no more when i turn around him solo that i can admit when I hear that, I love the keys so winning instead of pretending and bending over backwards over half of the whole had work done solo my halo say wait low it feel like it's been solo that when they throw pussy up pesos on payroll they own verses it's coming back different and yeah that shit hurts me i'm humming and whistling to those not deserving i stumbled and lived everywhere yeah man three stacks is a goat you know he he's in that conversation whether you like it or not three stacks is in that conversation for goat status absolutely uh, I'm actually doing first reactions to Outkast's discography as well, but uh, that's ex exclusive for the patrons. Uh, I do believe that AT Aliens is the only one that I have out right now, or is it Aqu Aquaman I? I think AT Aliens is the only one out, and I'm doing Aquaman I uh, next. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, then the, the link to the Patreon's in the description, but uh, the patrons are getting exclusive first reactions to um, Outkast and their discography. But um, yeah, Andre 3000 is just a monster. He's a monster. Uh, but like I said, I, I had heard that track before. Pretty sweet, track 11. What is this, man? This is okay. The way it picked up was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's bad. It's definitely got that, that similar kind of vibe to... Um, Skyline Toe or Skyline 2. Um, it's just not going to be very memorable in my opinion. And the uh, intro was really chaotic. I get that it's intentional, but it's still kind of just not my style. Um, I don't see myself really coming back to this one a whole lot. But once you get towards that middle section where things kind of get a little bit more normal, it's not bad. Pretty good. Nothing too crazy though. Track 12 is Facebook Story. I don't want it because I was like in front of her, in front of her, accept her. She thought I was cheating. The friend request? What? Crazy. You're better off, dude. Like, uh, You're better off. Nothing. That is a crazy story. If that's true, uh, anybody in that situation where your partner decides to leave you because you won't add them on Facebook because they think you might be cheating on them, they leave you, you're, you're better off without them. Dude, that's crazy if that's true. Um, I love French accents. If you're watching this and you're from France, send me voice messages on Instagram. <laughs> In English, I love the French accent. It's it's so cool. Um, in all seriousness, man, that's uh yeah, that's a really interesting story. I uh I hope that's not true. I do hope that's not true, and he didn't have to go through that. That would uh that would suck. That would suck. Track thirteen is close to you. But you could. Wow. I love this processing on the vocals. Really cool. Yeah, very uh Bonnie Vare, Kanye West, Lost in the World, you know, kind of kind of vibes from there. Uh I like it. I like it. I really like that heavily processed, kind of robotic, you know, layered sound. A really interesting little vibe for uh, a minute and thirty seconds. Really sweet little interlude. That's the type of stuff I like, man. There's the creative use of technology in your music. I, I'll, I'm always for that. Always for it. Really dope. Track 14, White Ferrari. Uh, like I said, the name is familiar to me, but uh, I don't know that I've heard it before. I, I can't think of what it sounds like, so. Watch the clouds <clears throat> white Ferrari. Kept my mouth closed. We're both so that's cool 
I would like it to pick up a little bit because it's over four minutes long, but yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Just give me a little something more. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Got caught in 4K or 1080p zoning out to this song, man. Just awesome. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the pretty slow start. I, I do think that if if he if you don't want to change anything about the the way that it starts, just shorten it. You know, it, it doesn't need to start for for two minutes before we finally pick up a little bit. But I think that's really the only thing I'd change about it is uh, that that intro portion is is just a little too long. It, uh, it only really gets piqued my interest really you know two minutes in to the track so um so so yeah uh i think that i would just shorten that intro portion a little bit but other than that this is just a really well done beautiful beautiful song really really enjoyable i had never heard it uh just the name was familiar but uh yeah i don't remember ever hearing that before in my life so i think i would have remembered that one how slow it starts uh track 15 siegfried markings on your surface nice love the way the bass came in gorgeous cinematic opulent I love it super lavish man Yeah, that's a really slow song, but uh, it, it's interesting in a way that the intro portion to White Ferrari isn't, in my opinion. Uh, it's still gripping, it still has enough going on in it where I'm, you know, interested and invested in it for five and a half minutes. Uh, the strings that come in are so cinematic, they really feel like you're in a, uh, a movie, like a super fancy kind of romance, you know, super uh, old school long flowing ballroom dresses kind of that's what i think of when i hear those violins you know what i mean just just super super uh lavish like it's just it's just full it's just rich you know that's really the way to describe it in my opinion um frank ocean is just a master of not overdoing things you know just, just doesn't overdo it with his vocals, doesn't overdo it with his production, doesn't overpower or overwhelm you at any point. Just just a wonderful track for you to just coast as you listen to it, you know? Just, just get lost in your own thoughts. Put this on and just drift, man. It's brilliant. It's it's really good. Godspeed, second to last song. How I do mm. Just a sweet word Oh, some more gospel chords here. Spicy. Wishing there will be mountains you Oh yeah, boy. Let's go. Still I'll always be there for reversed choir sounds, choir vocals. Let go of my claim on you. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Always oh man. Love these notes she's hitting. Yeah, man. <laughs> Talk about a really dope little quick, romantic, warm, you know, gospel-ish kind of vibe, man. God, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That's an awesome song. I added that one to my playlist, man. The Patreon playlist. Uh, that, is, that is just a fantastic track. I love that. Short, sweet. Ah, and the, the feature. Who was that singing at the end? Please let me know. So beautiful. Futura free. Nine and a half minutes long. See long as I can fuck three times a day and not skip a meal, I'm good. I'm a, I mm. should be paying them. I should be paying y'all honest to Galaxy. It takes God a lot of honesty. These lanes, I wanna... Majestically. Yeah. I ain't on no schedule. You see I'm changing on. I feel like Selena. I like this beat. I'm not sure that I understand the second half of that track 
uh, a lot of it was really tough to understand because of the quality of the audio. A lot of it was just really, you know, unintelligible. But I'm, I'm really not sure as to what it would mean in the long run. Um, you know, why is that there? I mean, this is only my first listen. So if anyone has any confirmation on any theories out there as to what it means, let me know in the comment section. And uh, just forgive my ignorance, because uh, I, I have only heard it once. Just bear that in mind. So, uh, yeah, I'm not mad at it, man. I'm not mad at Future of Free. I think that the middle section where the beat drops and he's rapping, kind of, is, a, is my favorite part of it. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that it stacks up as an outro as well as nike's does as an intro if that makes any sense i think nike's is a better intro than uh future of free is a, is an outro that's what i mean to say but still man blonde has got to be one of the best albums i might have ever heard off my first listen like just, just straight up um there's not one song on here that i full-on dislike the execution was just so good the uh production so interesting the use of uh, guitars and and layers and and you know vocal processing and pitching and layering and the auto tune and uh and you know filters and uh, uh orchestral instruments and the arrangements and the, the transitions and switches during the beats i mean everything about this just felt super intentional super well executed very very nicely put together um you know of course there's always an intention but they still managed to keep it without feeling like it's like it's rigid and structured and they, they still manage to keep it feeling carefree and and uh you know natural and and super easy to drift to it's such a nice album to put on and, and just kind of vibe out you know so uh I, I love the way that they performed this album that he performed this album i love the way they put this together i can't wait to go back and listen to it again i i am very very happy with this album and i i think it was worth it i think it was worth the wait I think it was I think it was worth waiting five years to listen to this album, you know? Um I, I certainly don't feel like like it like I've missed out on um on anything by listening to it five years later. I think it holds up extremely well. I think it um you know sounds like it could have come out last week and it would have been one of the better albums of the year so far, you know? This is just tremendous. Really I don't think I can do it justice, you know, but if you're watching this video, you've probably heard the album already. And you probably agree that it's it's just fantastic. So if you're a person like I was who had, has not heard this yet, then by all means, you know, put on some headphones, lay down, turn off the lights, and just float. Just put this on and float, man. Just, it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Uh, and I guess this means I have to do Channel Orange now, right? Because I haven't heard that either. Uh, <laughs> believe it or not. So Channel Orange is uh, is coming up, I guess. Let me know in the comment section if you would like to see that. Um, now I have heard most of Channel Orange, you know, I think, I think I got maybe halfway through it, but so long ago that again, same, same situation. I, uh, don't remember what any of the songs sound like, so I could definitely do a video on that if you want to, if you want me to. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, Patreon is in the description if you want to join that. You can also become a member of the channel and get access to some exclusive videos. Uh, like I said, the Outcast videos are, is going up exclusively for the patrons and the members. And uh, there will be other series as well, similar to that one. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I will see you in another video or live stream very, very soon. Shout out to everyone who donated to help us reach this goal uh, during the streams to uh, you know help us get this out this uh, video out to you guys. I really appreciate you guys for helping me to keep doing this uh, you know for a living down here in Brazil. It means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate your support throughout all of uh, all these videos and, and all these streams that I've been doing recently. It means a lot to me. So uh, shout out to you if you're watching this video. Really appreciate you. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section. I'll be back soon. Until then, stay safe out there. Tell somebody that you love that you love them. Uh, peace out, guys.